And you're here with C Major before the show. I'm your host, C Major Porter, and I have a very special guest today. Applause, applause. <laughs> we have Miss Jessica. <laughs> Otherwise known as Jess. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> So glad you could be here today. Thank you. So what we're going to do now, we're going to just have a natural piano lesson, the way we normally do it here. And um, do you want to say anything about your lessons experience so far? No, I mean, Carol helps me with um, my college piano course and helps me with, like, all the pieces and stuff like that. So Okay, yeah. okay. And so uh, you seem to be doing really, really well. Yeah. So I'm very pleased about your progress. Yeah. And I hope you just keep going up and up and up. So um, what are your what are your plans for the rest of the year? You think? Mm, as far as pieces, yeah. I plan on having the Chopin down. Okay. And the Bach down. Okay. Okay. So Jess is focusing mostly on classical pieces for her piano class. But I do want to mention, she is a fabulous, and I do mean fabulous, trumpet player. (laughs) How do you say trumpet in professional terms? Trumpeter? Trumpeter? Okay, okay, she's a professional trumpeter (laughs) here in the greater New York City area. So uh, if you ever had a chance to see her live, you you are in for a treat. So, But right now, we're going to focus on some of the classical things that she's doing. So we have the, what is this, the prelude? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So how's that going? How'd that go for you this week? Did you focus mostly on the left hand, or you focus mostly on the right hand? Or I tried what to happened? block the left hand. Okay. And that's about it so Okay. Far. Okay, so let's hear a little bit of it. Don't be nervous. Do your thing, you know. You're great at what you do at the piano, and I know we've talked about blocking chords and, Right now we're doing, I don't know if you know, we are doing a Piano for Parents series because uh, I found that, you know, chords are the best way to teach adults, in my experience. And a lot of the adults that want to learn to play the piano, besides yourself, of course, your college student, are parents. But I think chords is a good way of doing it. And this is a perfect example of what you can do with chords in classical music. So I know you're not a parent yet. <laughs> You're just a college student. <laughs> but, you know, who knows? In the future, you may want to share some music with, you know, young artists, young and up and kind of artists. So that's, that's, that's what it's about. It's about sharing music for the next generation. I think chords are the way to, to do that. So let's hear a little bit of your left-hand progress here on this piece. And this is the Chopin Prelude. Um, and... Uh, You may recognize it, Opus 28, number 4. Turn the volume up a little bit. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right, let's just uh, try it again here. So here you have a G in the bass, followed by B, and then followed by E. Okay, so it looks like it's an inversion of some sort, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so really it is an E minor chord, right? Mm -hmm. Except it's inverted, so we're playing second inversion. So let's just play that. Play it again. Play it again. Let's get the rhythm going. Okay, sounding great so far. Now I'm not sure if we have that anywhere else. It looks like it is coming up a little bit later in the piece. Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't done a formal analysis of it, but it does come back here. So if we numbered our measures, we can see exactly where that is. Well, let's go to the next measure. So here we have F in the bass. I'm sorry, F sharp, because we are in E minor. A, and then, yeah, let's try that. So... Just move your thumb a half step lower and play. There you go. Good. Now you're going to move your little finger a half step 
lower and go to F natural. There you go. Sounding great. Okay, good. Now let's get those next two. So now we have an F. Keep the F natural. We have an A and a D. Mm -hmm. Good. Now an F, G sharp, and a D. Good. Okay, so let's start right there for a moment. So how are you feeling about that line so far? Okay, I feel like the accidentals are going to, like, be a little weird, but... Okay. It is just moving in, like, half steps for the most part, so... Right, right. And again, you know, we haven't done an analysis of this, so we don't really know exactly what we're playing, except mm -hmm. we are starting out with an inverted E minor chord, mm -hmm. which will be your one in this case. So even though... The uh, key signature looks like it's G. The relative minor is E minor. So we do start off with that E minor chord there. And then we end with, I believe, an E minor chord at the end. Okay. So um, the accidentals are just there. So you just have to, you know, make sure that you're putting your <laughs> fingers on the right notes at the right time. Mm -hmm. And just, just have fun with it. Now what about the melody? Are you familiar with the melody at all? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because it's 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 a famous it's a famous prelude. It's been featured in in um, in movies and 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 I think we talked about if I'm not mistaken, this was uh, the piece that was featured in what's that Glenn Close movie with mm -hmm. uh, the lady at the piano, the wife at the piano. Um, the Fatal is a Fatal Attraction. Yeah, there you go, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what, yeah. I think this is the piece. I think this is the piece. I have to double check that, but I think, you know, this is where she was sitting at the piano. She was sad, a little bit, feeling a little bit depressed, heartbroken, and she was expressing herself by playing the Chopin prelude. So, okay, so let's get a little bit of this main melody going. By the way, you're doing great. Isn't Jess doing a great job? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like a student. And don't forget to pick up your cat sticker at the end of class. I think I owe you a cat sticker. <laughs> you deserve many cat stickers. Those cat stickers have been so popular with my students. So, Okay. All right. So the melody. That's easy. <laughs> just going back and forth from a B to a C, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a B octave, right? And then you keep the B, and you just have to make sure the B and the C are coming in on the right counts. But on C major before the show, we don't really talk about reading music. We do that over at the C major radio show. So today is really a treat. So Jess is pushing you guys to learn to read music. So <laughs> for any of you adults out there um, looking for piano lessons, just know it's possible. Everything's possible. Okay, let's see what you can do with this melody. And, and if we feel like we can do it, we'll put, um, we'll put hands together. But let's see what we get. That's good. So what I want to see if we could do now is just I like to work one measure at a time because I don't like to overwhelm my students. You know, it can be really, really stressful to ask someone to, to play a whole entire line, hands together, when uh, they're not really ready to do that. So let's just see. Even just leave out the octave. Leave this out. Leave that out. And just see if you can put hands together. Starting with the B, coming together with the E minor chord in the left hand. So the repeated E minor, inverted E minor chord. And then just play those first counts there. Okay, there you go. Good. 
Excellent. Okay, that calls for another applause. <laughs> I celebrate everything here on um, Seniors Before the Show. I think every little step, every little baby step counts. That sounded magnificent. How did that feel? And how does it feel to play with nails? <laughs> Nail <weird>. tips. <laughs> I, you know. I have to laugh about that because <laughs> when I first saw you have those tips, I just thought, how in the world are we going to accomplish piano <laughs> lessons? <laughs> but, you know, we're living in the age of Cardi B and everything else <laughs> out there with <laughs> the long scissor nails. So I've been tempting myself. I'm like, what if I get some nail tips? <laughs> See if I can play Mozart with nail tips. <laughs> okay. So, feeling good about that measure? Let's see what happens with the second measure. Now, the second measure is a little tricky because you had to move, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's see if we can make that B happen, right? You have to play that F sharp there. Okay, let's see what you could do. Good. All right, keep going. Excellent. Wow, you sound really nice. And we haven't, by the way, we haven't even used the pedal, which is recommended. Um, and then you see in the performance directions it has tenuto sempre, which means always tenuto. Right, so you always want to use more stress in the left hand chords. And then the melody, you're just expressing that. So we haven't talked about phrasing and all those things yet. And it does start out quiet. According to these editors' remarks here, they want you to start out piano. And then we have largo, which means slow, basically at a snail's pace, right? And then you can speed that up. So, um, okay, let's hear, let's see if we can hear those two measures together. And if that goes well, we'll put the, the first octave stretch that starts the piece. We'll put that in. Okay, so let's hear from here to there and see what happens. Okay, that was close. Now, that was a different prelude than what's there. <laughs> but it was close. Almost, not quite. So something happened in that second measure. Yes, okay. So, wait. Right. Almost, and I would have to, you know, analyze it, but it almost sounds to me like it's a diminished chord, or half diminished, and then it goes to fully diminished. But I would have to just check and see what, you know, the theory professionals out there agree <laughs> that that sound is, you know. So, it could be an F sharp, half diminished seventh, going to a, a fully diminished Seventh chord, F sharp, um, diminished chord. But I would just have to check the analysis. But it's definitely an interesting sound, right? Okay, so see if we can do it one more time. Give you a second try on that. So now that you know the, how the hands are moving, and the fingering is not that hard, right? You're just going from here to here and then to here, right? So that's the move. Okay, so let's just try that move together so you can see. Okay, and then... There you go. And then put the thumb. Okay, good. All right. So does that seem clear? That seems clear. Okay, okay. And how do you like to be taught? Do you like to be taught by analysis or you like to be taught by movement or just, you know, repetition? I think movement helps. Yeah. Like the visual and seeing how everything relates. Right, right, right. Just thinking in terms of half steps. Yeah. You know? Okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Um, cause I've had, you know, many students over the years and some of them like to learn, you know, just visually by seeing it. So if I mark up the page, that helps them and others like to, to hear what's going on with the changes and then they go, oh yeah, okay. I know that's the sound that's coming next. That's the sound that's coming next. And then others, 
you know, it's more of a kinesthetic if they could just see how everything is moving there and then follow that. So maybe that's the learning style that's at work right now. Okay, let's try that. And in the future, you know, I hope to become a better teacher. I mean, I've had, you know, uh, a lot of experience. But the way you explain things is so different than how you actually do things yourself. You know, so I have an invitation at, on the table right now from Harvard. So I'm going to see if, you know, I can tap into their certificate program mm -hmm. to learn some more teaching tips. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, anyway, let's see what we can do with this. Okay, so here we go. Okay, good. All right, now let's go ahead with this uh, practices again. About the uh, repetitions. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, so... You know, it's always interesting to me, the repetition. So you've heard me say the whole thing about, you know, playing it six times before it really starts mm -hmm. to, you know, fit in your mind or stick in your mind, if you want to use that word. And then eight times to practice it for is great. I really wonder, you know, what the high-tech example of that is. If we had to measure, you know, what it takes to be successful. We had a computer or some sort of math machine <laughs> to measure. <laughs> I wonder what it would be. I wonder what would be the success rate, you know, for students uh, to practice. How many times does it take? It's almost like the Tootsie Roll problem, you know. <laughs> How many times does it take to get to the middle of the Tootsie Roll? Mm -hmm. um, so, all right, let's try it this time. Let's see if we can put the right hand with it. Excellent. Okay, let's we'll stop there. Applause, applause, and cheers. <laughs> you really did your homework. <laughs> so when you listen back to today's uh, podcast, we're going to play it, and then we're going to do another live show later on today. We're going to hear some of the sound effects of the applause and the cheers <laughs> cheering for you. <laughs> so um, you did great. I think you did great. So... I'm going to wrap up the podcast now, then we're just going to continue with the lessons. But anything else you want to say about piano lessons and your experience? <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> so, again, it's been a great pleasure to be with you. This is Jess, our special feature here on C Major Before the Show, and you're here with C Major Porter. So continue listening. We're going to post this a little bit later on this evening, and then we're going to do our live program later on tonight, and don't forget to also listen to the CMG Radio Show. But again, applause and cheers for Jess. Mm -hmm. We're very ready to come on. And she definitely did her homework. I'm going to play the homework sound effect. Mm -hmm. So I'll see you guys a little bit later on tonight. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day. Have a great Saturday. And I'll see you again soon. Take care.